Stacey here with um, my labor and delivery story. This video was requested by a few people, a few of my subscribers, so I decided to go ahead and do it. And um, I decided to do it a little different than what I've seen here. I decided to include my husband in the video um, because he was there the entire time as well, so he probably has some input about it. So I just decided to include him so you can hear his side of the story as well. Um, starting from the beginning, we had our beautiful baby girl on January 16th, 2014. So she is three weeks old today. She's healthy, bundle of joy, head full of hair, cute as all can be. Couldn't ask for anything better. So getting started with the labor and delivery story. I had her on a Thursday, but we're going to start this story on, we're going to rewind to that Monday because it all kind of ties in together. So, starting that Monday, which was January 12th, I had a doctor's appointment and I was 38 weeks and 5 days and um, I was really excited to go to the doctor because I was, this would have been my first, would be my first exam for them to tell me how far along I am, if I'm dilated, if I'm effaced, anything like that. So, I was kind of telling you don't get your hopes up. He was telling me not to get my hopes up, but I was excited because I really, really was hoping that I can at least be a little bit progressed. I was so over being pregnant at this point. So we get to the doctor. Again, I'm 38 weeks, 5 days. I get my exam, and he tells me that I am 100% effaced, which just means that my cervix has completely softened. However, I am not dilated at all. Zero centimeters dilated. My cervix was closed. And he told me that um, I would probably be going past my due date. Now, this was January 12th. My due date was January 23rd. So... I was a little defeated at the end of this doctor's appointment. Which I don't know why, because your due date wasn't still for another week and four days. Doesn't matter. I was still defeated at this point because, like I said, I just wanted to hear some kind of you're progressing. Something. I just wanted to hear something you good. Because you were, your cervix was soft. Yeah, but, I mean, that dilation number, that's the number that you wish you to hear. Still like... 11 days away from It doesn't from matter. Delivery. It doesn't matter. I wanted to hear that I was at least one, two, three centimeters dilated something. Anyway, I wasn't dilated at all. Cervix was still closed. So I kind of left that doctor's appointment a little defeated. Fast forward to about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, Monday night, well, Tuesday morning. I started to have irregular contractions. At least, I, I didn't know if they were contractions, actually. I was actually on my tablet looking up what a contraction feels like and what to do if you think you're in labor because I didn't think I was in labor because I was just told not even 12 hours prior that I was not dilated at all. But I knew I was having pains and I'm like, I shouldn't feel like this if I'm not in labor. So I was actually on my tablet looking up like what to do if you're in labor or what does a contraction feel like because I wasn't sure what was going on. And so finally at about... 3.30, 4 o'clock, I finally was able to fall asleep after all of these irregular contractions. And I remember waking up about 6.15 to come upstairs cause I, to get dressed from work. Because at this point, I'm sleeping on the couch because she's like tossing and turning at this point. It's been like four days. She's tossing and turning. She's uncomfortable. She can't get... She can't get comfy, so it's it's hard for me to sleep, and I just felt like I would give her more space in the bed so she could sleep, and that's when she was like, oh, you know, I was having these pains, but they, they felt like they was contractions, but I don't really know if they was contractions, I don't really know what's going on, and I was like, well, should I stay home from work, what should we do, and she's like, oh, no, go to work. So he goes to work and I go to work as well. That This is Tuesday now. We're both at work. Um, he tells me to call the doctor when I get to work just to see what they say. I call the doctor and um, basically they tell me if I'm not, if the contractions aren't at least five minutes apart um, and if I'm not feeling like, you know, regular pains, then I'm probably not in labor. So don't come in basically is what they told me. So took their advice, didn't go in, but I just stayed at work all day and get home from work I cooked dinner it was just a regular night um and then around 10 o'clock I was watching my tv my Tuesday night tv shows and around 10 o'clock at night I started to have pains again now at first I thought it was the same pains from the night before and I was like come on not again like 
how am I supposed to get through another night of this if I'm not in labor? And from about 10 to about 3, they just started coming closer and closer and closer together, the pains. And um, I remember her waking me up about, it's probably about 1.45, 2 o'clock, and she was like, these is I don't know what's going on, but it hurt, and I don't know what's going on, but we need to call a doctor to see what we need to do, because this is unbearable. And I remember, like, telling her, like, well, if you feel like you're about to, if you feel like you're in labor, and she's like, I don't really know what labor feels like. <laughs> so we was, like, walking up and down the stairs, walking around the house, walking through the kitchen, walking through the living room, walking around the dining room, sitting down for a second to the point where she was, like, this is unbearable. We need to call somebody. So I remember she was like on the floor in Morgan's room, like crawling around on the floor. And I'm talking to the like receptionist lady or the person who was going to patch us through or send a page to the doctor. And she was asking me questions and I'm like asking her questions. And she like yelling at me the answers. I'm, it was just a whole ordeal that we needed to. To the point where it was like, all right, well, she was like, well, we need to go. Um, like you said, he was talking to, I think the nurse on call is who it was. And they usually send the message to the doctor on call. But they have to call you, the doctor has to call you back. So at this point, the nurse is like, okay, well, sit tight. I'm going to have the doctor call you back and they'll give you further instructions. I mean, it was to the point where my contractions, I think when I decided to call the doctor, they were like seven minutes apart. By the time she said that, they got to be like six minutes apart. And then I'm like, okay, I don't care what they say. I'm going to the hospital. I cannot sit here. You know, I just can't sit here and I'm in serious pain. We're on our way. So we're gathering our bags, put our coat on. By the time we leave for the hospital, my contractions were five minutes apart. And so we got to the hospital halfway there and the doctor finally calls us back and she goes, well, if you're, um, if they're at least five minutes apart, then you can come in if you want. And I'm like, yeah, we're halfway there already. So we're in the car. That was a treacherous car ride. I mean, I was just in serious pain every few minutes. I got a contraction. Squeezing on my hand. Yeah. Had to break my fingers. <laughs> It was, it was tough to get through. That was a bad car ride. I mean, even from the wheelchair ride up to, from the bottom floor of the hospital up to the maternity ward was a bad thing because I was in pain then. And it was, it was painful. Like, wasn't what I expected it to be. You know, somebody tells you something's going to hurt and you're like, oh, well, I should be able to take it. It was painful. Yeah, but then we got in. And then we went back into the triage room because they wanted to make sure to see, you know, that it was actually really about to to happen. At this point, I'm kind of like checking in with my job because I'm supposed to be to work at 7 o'clock in the morning at this point. And it's like 3.30 and I'm like, 4.30. Yeah, 4.30. Yeah, 4.30. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be beat if I got to go to work. <laughs> I've been up since 1.30. And then they tell her, well... This is happening. When we got to the hospital, I was four centimeters dilated, which was so crazy to me because just this is Wednesday morning at like 4.30 a.m. Just on Monday afternoon, Monday afternoon, I was told that I wasn't dilated at all. So I didn't do anything out of the ordinary on Monday night or Tuesday. So that's what was so crazy to me. How did I become four centimeters dilated? And I didn't do anything. So that's why I was kind of not believing that it was actually labor. But got there, I was four centimeters dilated. They told me this is happening tonight. So I was like, oh, okay. So um, I'm still in pain. At this point, we go to the actual labor room. And we're in the labor room. And, I mean, I'm trying to work through the pain. At this point, no, I was trying. To work I was trying. <laughs> At this point, he's there. And my dad has also come as well. And my dad's, like, asking me questions and trying to talk to me. And I'm like, Dad, I... I can't talk right now like he was trying to talk to them he calls my mom she gets on the phone and tries to talk I'm like mom I can't really talk it was just it was horrible so this is around five o'clock in the morning around seven o'clock I ended up getting my epidural because I just couldn't take it anymore it was I mean I had been in pain at that point since 10 o'clock the night before so I just I couldn't take it anymore and I went ahead and got the epidural yeah, which I was Facebook and then everybody 
probably was about the time when everybody was like, oh, what's going on, what's going on? Everybody outside of the family who didn't know was finding out, like, oh, this is happening, it's going down, so. And, at, like, at this point, it was, I mean, it was just, I wish I wouldn't have got the epidural that early because I feel like it kind of slowed my labor down, mm -hmm. but... I, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I just couldn't help it. So, 7 o'clock, I'm getting the epidural. 7 a.m., Wednesday morning. Um, around 9 o'clock Wednesday, they broke my water. 9.30, I think it was closer to 10 o'clock, actually. They broke my water, and they told me that I should start dilating about a centimeter an hour. At this point, I think I was only like four and a half centimeters. I don't think I had dilated much since the epidural, or since um, they checked me in the triage room. So they told me I should start dilating about a centimeter an hour. That did not happen. Um, again, this was like 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. So that was like the beginning of a long labor. Literally, we sat there. I was like, I was feeling pretty good after the epidural. I was up watching TV, texting friends. I would go, I would sleep for a few hours, wake back up because I didn't get any sleep the night before or really the night before that. So we would like sleep for a couple Call hours, wake back up. Yeah, that room was freezing. Yeah, cold, cold in there. But I'm like eating popsicles. I'm feeling good. And then all of a sudden, it's, well, it's like 5 o'clock, and I called my job just to kind of check in and let them know how far along I was and where I was. And I talked to one of the girls at my job, and she goes, are you having this baby today? And I'm like, yeah, I better. I didn't. But <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have this baby today, not knowing that I was still being labor for literally another like eight hours and at I was that so point pumped. and I was already in labor for 12 hours at that point I was so like pumped for her to come that day too because I was like actually Martin Luther King's real live birthday so I was like really pumped for her to come on that actual day I mean I started come. labor the day before so I just knew she was coming you know on Wednesday the 15th so um anyway uh yeah it's five o'clock I'm telling my co-worker oh yeah I'm having this baby today that keep fast forwarding I mean the night's going droning on and on around 10 or 11 o'clock I started to feel pressure it might have been like 10 o'clock I started to feel a lot of pressure um just a whole lot of pressure and I, I felt my body started telling me it's time to push and they were like d giving me more of the epidural dose um because they were trying to stop it was like pressure and pain at the same time and they were trying to stop it so they were giving me more of the epidural and I mean it was just so much pressure and my body was saying push and the nurse kept saying no you can't push yet you're only eight centimeters you're only eight and a half centimeters um so I just really wasn't progressing as fast as I should have been as you wanted to or as I wanted to. Morgan was going as fast as she wanted to and needed to go. I guess. You just wanted to go fast. I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I've been in labor for like 20 hours at this point. So it, it was it was, it was was hard to sit there and continuously go through that. And I'm like, I'm just not progressing like I thought I would be. Especially how she told me I would be at a centimeter an hour. I should have had that baby around 4 o'clock. So, um, anyway, we get to about... 12 o'clock maybe 11 30 i'm like 11 30 p.m wednesday night i'm about nine she told me i was 9.75 centimeters dilated yeah, and i'm like i can't push what is going on you need to be 10 centimeters dilated exactly for them to let you push or you can tear some stuff down there um which, you still did. which i still tore a little bit but that's a story for another yeah. day I remember telling mom, like, this baby ain't coming today. It was like 11.30. I was like, yeah, she's not coming today. Yeah, it was, oh. yeah. So it was, like I said, it was, um, I was 9.75 centimeters dilated. And my body was just kept saying, push, push, push. I remember the nurse came in. She's like, oh, the doctor's on her way in. The doctor's on her way in. Took the doctor about 20 minutes to get in. Finally, she checked me. And finally, I was about 10 centimeters dilated at about 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. Thursday morning. And um, get to that point, we're waiting on them to prep the room. Finally, I was allowed to push. They prepped the room, and we got started at probably around 12.45, not even. Um, no, it was about 12.40. About 12.45. Maybe about 12.45, we got started yeah. pushing. I had my baby at 12.59 a.m. Thursday, January 16th. So it was about 22 hours in labor, very long labor, but it was all worth it. Um, she was 6.1 ounces 
18 and three quarter inches long and just the most beautiful baby you would ever see so she was beautiful it was like a it was crazy because it was like I was so I was looking at Morgan and I, I held her and then like her parents was in the room so it was like it was cool because they was like looking over Morgan and I was trying to make sure she was good at the same time because she I mean that's an ordeal to, to go through so but they was both healthy they was both fine Morgan was healthy she was good and CC had made it she was fine nothing no complications so I was just I was we was blessed very blessed I mean it was the, the delivery was actually the easiest part um, pushing her out was so easy I didn't push long at all and it was quick and she came right out and that was the easiest part the labor was the work the actual labor but I had so many um, great people beside me of course my husband was there the entire time coaching me through it and making sure I was comfortable and relaxed my parents were there and um, his mom and sister stopped by to see us as well my sisters came by to see us while I was in labor so we had plenty of visitors and um, just great people around to, to help get us through it so, um, fast forward, I guess, to going up to the recovery room. Oh, you had me bring all them bags in the hospital that we didn't need. Whatever. We went up to the recovery room, and, um, we got up there. We were finally able to have our first night with our baby, and, um... Uh, a really great night the only thing obviously they have to continuously come in and check on me to make sure I'm healing properly and to check on um, the baby to make sure that she was doing fine but um, that's the only thing that I hate about the hospitals but other than that um, everything was great move on to about 8 o'clock Thursday morning um, they come in and tell us that our daughter has a case of jaundice and explain what that is. Jaundice is just, uh, at this point, her liver hadn't been detached from, she hadn't learned, her liver hadn't learned how to work on its own yet. And it had been working, CeCe's liver had been working for Morgan. So it was breaking down all of the food and nutrients in her body to get it in her bloodstream that she needed. So at this point it needed to work on its own and it wasn't ready yet, which is normal. 80 to 85 percent of babies born early have this, so it wasn't nothing to be to be scared of. And all it's just a little yellow in the little little yellow in the skin, which is nothing to be caught too too nervous about. Which she was fine. She was still fine and able to come home. Nothing that held her up or anything. But that's all. So, um, yeah, our baby had a case of, of that, of jaundice, and the thing I hated most about being in the hospital was that because our baby had the jaundice, basically they brought in this, like, little baby tanning booth, and um, it looked like a bassinet with, like, tanning lights on it. Basically, they brought it in, and our baby had to be under those lights from about 8 o'clock Thursday morning to about 8 o'clock. Um, Friday morning and so 24 hours she had to be under these lamps basically tanning lamps and um, it was supposed to help the yellowing of her skin and um, they had to have this mask on her face so she, all day she was under these lights we were not allowed to take her from under these lights except for feedings and we um, like and she was only allowed to be out for 30 minutes during the feedings so so I mean, hours, 30 minutes every, every three, three hours. hours, we were able to take her out. So the whole first day, I wasn't able to just hold my baby, which I really didn't like. And I just hated that she was under those lights. And it was, um, that was the worst part about being in the hospital. But, you know, anything to make sure your child is safe, obviously. But it was just, that was hard to watch for 24 hours, just to watch her under those lights. And, and I can't hold her, and I can't do anything. You know, you just want to hold your baby when they first come out. And I wasn't able to hold her or anything like that, you know, after those initial first hours. She's a soft mommy. I mean, when they used to take her for test, when they were taking her for test, or she had to sit on her lights, Morgan was fine. Morgan did great. Her mother, on the other hand, was, had the problem. I mean it just sucked because they had to test her 
for the um you know just to make sure that her uh, they test the so jaundice sure by levels. billy billy rubin or it's something in your body called billy rubin and that that's how they test for the jaundice and so they have to prick her foot to test her bilirubin levels levels and so they had to continuously test her bilirubin levels and continuously prick her feet and so i mean that part it just sucked they had to take her every few hours for some like type every, of test it was like every eight hours they, they took her like th three times they took her a lot they took her like four times 12, it was like every 12 hours they took her. To... It didn't seem like every 12 hours. <laughs> they took her a lot. And it was just, that was really hard to watch. But, I mean, she's fine. She's safe now. She's healthy. And she's just the per most perfect little girl. So, um, like I said, anything for your child to be healthy, obviously. But that was really hard to go through. Other than that, um... Yeah, the hospital visit was great. The hospital staff was great. The nursing staff, doctors, they were all really amazing. They were so helpful. The lactation consultants, if you, I don't know if every hospital have, has lactation consultants, but if you can take advantage of that, if you're breastfeeding, take advantage of the lactation consultants. They came around, I think like two or three times while we were there. And they really helped me as far as breastfeeding and getting her to latch on and everything like that. They were so, so helpful um, as far as that goes. Um, so if you have lactation consultants at your hospital that you can take advantage of, definitely do so if you plan on breastfeeding. Um, any thoughts? I mean, everything was good. I think we had a great everything from her because she had three, three doctors because she was in labor for so long. Um, two two nurses, both which her night her the nurse who actually helped deliver the baby was great. She was great. Um, the nurses who helped take care of us once we got to the postpartum the postpartum room, they were great, phenomenal. They helped us even though the last nurse even gave us some extra milk because Morgan had to supplement because of her jaundice and she was like, well, I'm gonna give y'all some extra milk to take home with y'all so y'all have to get any. Right, well, it was just a great, 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 great staff. Great people. Only thing I hated was sleeping on that little couch that I had to sleep on the time I was there. Other than that, it was great. So, we were discharged on Saturday, January 19th. And, um, yeah, great experience, great doctors, great nurses, and um, great child. So, we, um, yeah, that's our labor and delivery story. Any final thoughts? Yeah, I would say... Um, like advice wise I would say to make sure you prepared and really prepared to actually do this like don't wait to the last minute because even though I've been through this before because I know I have a son from a prior relationship and um so I've done the whole labor thing before and so I kept even while she was pregnant I kept telling her she was always she was like that's how my wife is she's like I gotta gotta do this 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 so she was like a month month and a half before Morgan was even supposed to be coming. She had bags ready to go. Not true. It was like a, at least a month. It was like three weeks. It was like a, I posted it. It was like a month. I like, posted it the vlog. Oh, it seemed like it was longer than that. She came downstairs with bags and I'm like, what you doing with these bags? She not due for another, she was due for another month. She came three weeks before. No, know? it was three Whatever. weeks because I posted the vlog. But anyway, be prepared. I would just say be prepared. Like I said, I wasn't and I've done this before, and she was on top of it, and it was like, the bags were ready to go, all I literally had to do was bring bags, and she actually even packed, I was like, don't pack me anything, she actually packed me some shorts to sleep in, and I actually ended up using those. So, I, mean, I told y'all he would, if you haven't watched my <laughs> What's in My Hospital bag video, I told y'all he would use them. Go ahead and watch that, I'm going to actually link that right here. Go ahead and watch it, and you'll see me say it. And like I said, I, I would have been fine sleeping in my jeans, I would have been perfectly fine sleeping in my jeans. But I, like I said, I would just say be prepared. Because even at the end of the day, we um we still didn't have some of the little stuff that she wanted to bring with her. Like hard candy and bottled water that she wanted to bring. We didn't have any of that stuff. And there wasn't no 24-hour stores open when we went to drive to the hospital. With us going to the hospital at 4 o'clock in the morning, wasn't a lot of things open. So we couldn't get that stuff, even though we hit like two gas stations and a convenience store where nothing was open. Nothing that they had none of the things that she wanted. Is that it? Um, and I would say 
be supportive. I mean, I think a great support staff is great in this and that ordeal. I would say, like, us as men, and even if you're not a man, if you're just a support person, you're not actually going through the ordeal and you're not delivering the baby. So the least you can do is, is just be there for the person. I was kind of, like, like I said, I didn't, people during, would always ask me, like, oh, you ready to have this baby? And I'd be like, I ain't got to do no work. So, yeah, I'm ready to have this baby. I ain't doing nothing. But all jokes aside, when she would, from the point when she came downstairs and was like, you know, thinking about having this baby, I was like, okay, well, I, you know, let's walk. Let's, let me make this, I'll call the people for you. Here, you can hold my hand while we're driving in the car. We, when she got that door, I came back, I was asking her if she okay. Every few minutes, I was in her face, like, you all right? You need me to get you anything? What you want to watch on TV? Anything I can do to make you more comfortable? You need another pillow? You need me to get your nurse? You need me to get your doctor? What you need me to do, I'm here. Just being there for the for them having a the baby, I think, is huge. That's what I was going to say, too, as far as um, my final advice or whatever i would just make sure you have um supportive people around you whether that's your husband your boyfriend or baby daddy or whoever that is or your parents or anybody that supports you a friend just have a supportive person around you that's just going to make you more relaxed and that kind of sounds like an oxymoron being relaxed in labor but it does help to have those supportive people around you just to know that they're there to make you more comfortable um yeah, it, it definitely helps. You don't want to bring your child into a stressful environment where you're stressed and your body's stressed. Um, so just try to stay relaxed as much as possible. Stay as comfortable as possible. Bring whatever you want to that you feel like can make you more comfortable while you're in the hospital. Anything that you think will make you don't more comfortable. Don't Anything that you think will make you more comfortable, I say bring it to the hospital and just make sure you have it handy because that's, especially my labor, I don't, I know some people whose labor labors weren't that long, but my labor was extremely long. And so being there with family and being there with um, just people who love me made it a lot better. Even if I was asleep, I knew he was there. You know what I'm saying? So I just having people there who support you and who you know has your back and and will be there when you wake up if you go to sleep that that always helps i think that'll help any situation so um other than that i don't want this video to be 40 minutes long so i think we're gonna wrap this up and um yeah i'm gonna post some pictures at the end of this video so you can see our daughter and if you're not following me on instagram definitely do so because i have all of the pictures of her are on instagram so definitely follow me on instagram and i'll have the links below and i think that is it don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye guys